Hello everyone. Today we're going to create a material. In the level we can see that the material will gradually spread outwards, and we can adjust its speed to use it as a crack or shockwave effect. Okay, to create this effect is actually very simple. We only need two textures to create the material, and apply this material in Niagara. These textures are the water caustics texture we used before and a noise texture, which is still provided free by Epic. You can download the textures and material assets I made on my Patreon. Then let's take a look at the material, which is a very important part, because we're using a material function that we haven't introduced before, vector to radial value, which can change the texture radially. We can try it. And we can see this radial effect, which we will use when we need to make kaleidoscopes and similar materials. Okay, there are three named reroute declarations here. The first is the sphere mask, a default sphere mask, but we've added a distort effect, still the same method we used before, using the water normal texture, and here is the vector to radial value. Because all the texture coordinates in this material use radial effects, then multiply them by a 2D vector, representing the tiling of U and V, we can connect directly to UV to see it. Yes, the UV here controls the tiling and spread of the texture, panner is same, so I won't go into details. Finally, mask the R and G channels, then multiply them by 0.1 to reduce the intensity of the distort, so we will get an irregular sphere mask. Now we set its radius to the mask in the dynamic material parameters to get a dynamic radius, so it can simulate the spread effect. Next is the shape. We just use the water caustic texture and vector to radial value. Different tiling is still set here. And finally, it's animation. Every material will need animation. Here we use noise soft, which is the texture we just introduced. Use vector to radial value and panner to get the effect of radial animation, then multiply it by the sphere mask. Of course, we can also use radial gradient. Their values are the same. Okay, multiply them together to get the animation. Now let's take a look at its opacity. First, use power on anim, set the exponential to two, then multiply it by seven to get different value, then multiply the output value by the shape and sphere mask to get the full shock wave effect. And the second one is the same, but different value is used to blend them here. So here it is multiplied by two, then 0.9 is added in floor to get a stronger value. Okay, blend them together will get a layered material. Finally, clamp the output value to 0 to 1, multiply it by the alpha channel in the particle color, and connect it to the depth fade, this is opacity. Next it's emissive color part, still uses a sphere mask, here we use lerp to make its mask area get different colors, the area close to 1 will output be, which is the part below, here we will set the sign period to 5 to distinguish it from the above one, so that we can get different color changes. Okay, the sign period of the above part is 3, then clamp the output value to 0 to 1, this is the LDR input. The output value multiplied by 5 is HDR tint. Yes, this is a complete shock wave material, we can see that it is very simple. The only point we need to pay attention to is material function vector to radial value. We can try to use this function in different materials. It will definitely be interesting. Okay, now let's make Niagara. We can use Sprite Renderer or Mesh Renderer. If using Sprite Renderer, we need to set particle facing. Set spirit facing to z-axis upwards. Okay, that's it. Add spawn burst. Yes, this is the material we just created. Life cycle set to infinite for easy preview. It is spawn once every 2 seconds. Lifetime of the particles is 1.5. Okay, now we will find that if we move the camera, the particles will move with the camera, so we need to set its alignment and facing mode to custom. Then add sprite alignment. The values here can keep as default because we just need to fix the alignment of the particles. 
then add dynamic parameter and set mask to a curve from 0 to 1. This will give an outward spread effect. We can set the value to 1 when the key data is 0.5. Now let's set the particle size first and then give it a color. This way we can see the effect of hue shift. A colorful effect. Also add scale color. Vector from float and curve. Multiply the color by 5. At the end, the value is set to 0.1. Alpha can copy this curve and scale curve is set to 1, OK, save the Niagara. Now let's take a look at its effect in the level. If we put it directly in the level, since depth fade is used in the material, so its opacity will decrease when it is close to the mesh. We can move its location up and we will see its effect. OK, so we have made a simple but very practical shock wave and crack effect. Of course. We can also use any texture similar to a grid shape, such as this one, so that we can get a more regular shape, and its effect should be good. Yes, it looks like coordinates. These textures can be selected by ourselves to create different shapes. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you like it. Bye.